animals that cannot be domesticated. Hey everyone, it's Alexa and welcome back to another video. If you're an animal lover, then you probably think that all animals deserve to be on this earth and should be protected. However, not all animals are equal when it comes to whether we should own them as pets or not. Here are some animals that have not been domesticated, even if people have already made them pets. But before we get into today's video, make sure that you're subscribed and ring the bell so that you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Great White Sharks The average adult great white shark weighs between 1,500 and 2,400 pounds. Males grow from 11 to 13 feet long. Females are larger, measuring up to 21 feet long. For years, humans have attempted to domesticate great white sharks, and for years, humans have failed. Many great white sharks don't live longer than a few days in captivity. In aquariums, they are known to hit their heads against glass walls repeatedly, most of them trying to escape. These sharks are known to travel great distances and prefer live prey, as as opposed to what aquariums can offer them. Zebras. When you look at a zebra, you think, well, it's a horse with stripes, right? But domesticating them isn't as easy as taming a horse. Zebras are close relatives to horses and donkeys, yet they are much too aggressive for domestic life. They do not trust easily, especially when it comes to humans and will find every chance to flee. They're used to the plains and mountains of Africa. Any confined space makes them very nervous. Plus, early colonists that hoped to domesticate zebras found that zebras were uncomfortable to ride. Coyotes. Most states in America do not allow people to own animals like coyotes, with good reason. Coyotes most likely will not look at you the same way your pet dog does. They are incredibly dangerous animals, yet some people insist on keeping them as pets. Sure, there are instances where pups raised by humans from a very young age that turned out to be more docile than their wild counterparts. There are even times when dogs and coyotes have successfully bred and had pups. In those cases, the pups will act friendlier if the mother was a domesticated dog. Bears. The story of a Russian couple that raised a bear cub went viral a few years ago. To this day, he's still living in their house. In videos, the bear appears happy, docile. However, this should not encourage people to pluck cubs from the wild and hope they will remain well-behaved their whole lives. Bears have a big appetite, and if they are hungry, they will eat anything they can find. It's not like they're afraid of humans, either. Many bears approach humans, sometimes even breaking into people's houses. Lions. Do people keep lions as pets? Yes. Does this prove that lions can and have been domesticated? Not at all. Just because the animal lives in captivity does not mean that animal is domesticated. Tame might be a more suitable term, but the lion is dubbed the king of the jungle. Inaccuracies aside, you cannot expect an animal so used to being the top predator in its environment to be comfortable in captivity. Actress Tippi Hedren famously owned a lion that she kept in her family home. Decades later, she admitted that she regretted letting a beast live near her loved ones. Raccoons. What a cute face. Wouldn't everyone love to own a pet raccoon? Probably not, especially after you realize how destructive they are. Raccoons are natural scavengers, which is why you find them rummaging through garbage all the time. Their human-like hands allow them to tear open or unscrew anything. These mammals only live up to three years in the wild and are a common carrier of rabies, a disease that humans and other animals can contract. Many raccoons prefer solitude and do not form loyalty to anyone, least of all people. Fox. Unlike wolves and other wild members of the Canidae family, foxes are either small or medium-sized. Other members of the same family are dogs. We've successfully domesticated them, so why not foxes? Well, we've certainly tried. Humans couldn't figure out what to do with some of these domestic foxes, so society focused on selectively breeding cats instead. A long time ago, there was a domesticated dog known as the Yagan dog. This fox did not prove as popular as dogs, so it eventually went extinct. Hippopotamus. They're chubby, round, and smile all the time. The hippopotamus seems like a pleasant animal to have around, but how wrong that assumption is. Hippopotamuses are some of the most aggressive animals in the African wild. Though they do not appear territorial on land, hippos have proved they are unpredictable in behavior and have been known to attack humans. Hippos possess jaws that can snap a wooden canoe in half. In Africa, they are responsible for 500 human fatalities every year. Just like Miley Cyrus, the hippopotamus can't be tamed. Cougar. Many places around the world prohibit the ownership of cougars as pets. In the US, Alabama, Wisconsin, and Nevada allow exotic animals as pets, but people are still liable for any injuries or destruction caused by said animals. Can the cougar be domesticated? No, 
at least not yet. Like the African lion, you can tame a cougar to the point that it behaves calmly and is used to humans, but domestication takes time and generations of breeding to achieve. Kinkajou. Related to animals such as raccoons, olingos, and ringtails, the kinkajou is often seen as a cuter mongoose. People already own kinkajous as pets, but as you've learned by now, that doesn't necessarily mean the kinkajou is fit to inhabit a human home. In captivity, the kinkajou can live up to 23 years. They're small and have excellent hearing, helping them detect the slightest movement. They also love to bite scratch, and overall injure people, even their owners, and they destroy furniture. Jeanette. At first glance, this animal looks like a mix between a cat and a ring-tailed lemur. So what exactly are we looking at? That's a Jeanette, a slender, cat-like member of the Feliform suborder. They have pointed muzzles and partly retractable claws. Most only grow up to 23 inches in length, though their tail accounts for 19 inches of that. How would they fare as pets? While you can socialize a Jeanette the same way you can a dog or a cat, they do like to attack. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes are one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Their fangs inject hemotoxic venom into victims, which destroys tissue and can be fatal if victims don't receive a dose of antivenom. Despite their fangs and venom, people still own rattlesnakes as pets. The upside to owning a rattlesnake is that they do not need a lot of your attention. There are many more downsides, such as thoroughly cleaning their enclosure, making sure they don't escape, making sure they don't get stepped on, and making sure they don't bite you or anyone else. Degu. The common degu is a small rodent native to central Chile. In captivity, they can reach the age of eight. They are social creatures and love living in large groups. If you own a degu as a pet, you need to keep them extremely active, and you must interact with them a lot because they feel the need to socialize. A neglected degu can be a neurotic, violent one. If you want to adopt a degu, select them at a young age to ensure that they are more familiar with you. Wallaroo. Wallaroos are smaller than kangaroos, but bigger than wallabies. There are different types of wallaroo. The common wallaroo is the best known species and live widespread around Australia. The black wallaroo is the smallest of all, only growing to 38 inches. Wallaroos are legal to own in some parts of the United States. They have proved to be loving and curious pets and seem to bond quickly with their owners. However, they are not domesticated and are still considered wild animals. Bonobo. The bonobo, also called the pygmy chimpanzee, is native to the Congo Basin in Central Africa. Bonobos are omnivorous and live mostly in forests. Scientists note that bonobos behave in a rather peaceful manner, though males will react with hostility to other males outside of their community. Bonobos show they are also very self-aware, like many great apes, and communicate through vocalizations and facial expressions. Even with their similarity to humans, chimpanzees have caused injury and fatalities to humans before. Skunk. The first the first thing you think of when associating a skunk as a pet would probably be the smell in your home. Skunk owners want people to know that this really isn't a big deal because skunks only release foul odors as a defense mechanism. If they feel safe and unthreatened, the air will be stink-free. Skunks are technically not domesticated. The most significant difference between a wild skunk and a domesticated one is that domesticated skunks no longer have a scent gland because their owners have it surgically removed. Some believe this is highly unethical. Should the skunk escape into the wild, they are vulnerable and have no means of protecting themselves. Serval. The serval is a cat and looks similar to a domesticated feline. Just remember that the serval is actually a wild one. This feline is native to Africa and is active in both the day and night. Like many pet cats, servals prefer solitude and minimal social interaction. Humans already own servals as pets, though rarely, because many locales make it illegal to own one. Servals look like small leopards, only weighing between 26 and 40 pounds. They have been bred with domestic cats before, though people are still advised against owning pure servals. Elephant. Here are other ideas that are important to differentiate. People are capable of training elephants, but a trained elephant is not the same as a domesticated one. We've been training elephants for over 3,000 years, yet elephants are still not domesticated. Any kept as pets would still be considered an exotic pet. To domesticate such beasts, humans would need to breed them over at least 12 generations selectively. Elephants are highly intelligent and emotionally aware animals. Even with training, they have a willful mind of their own and can act unpredictably. 
Tiger. Yes, people keep tigers as pets. Should they? That's debatable. Let's take a look at the facts. Tigers are strong. They can take down animals that weigh 500 pounds. Male tigers behave in an extremely territorial manner and love spraying their urine everywhere to signify what belongs to them. Tigers require lots of space to run, climb, and jump. Many have escaped their enclosures before. Tiger cubs aren't as dangerous, though their play bites can be powerful enough to kill someone. Before we reveal number one, we've got a question for you. If you could own any creature, real or imaginary, as a pet, what would it be and why? Let us know in the comments below. One, dingo. We've all heard about the case of the dingo and the baby. After many years, the Australian court finally concluded that that story was true. Observing the appearance of one, the dingo doesn't look that different from a dog. Actually, dingoes are dogs. Wild dogs, that is. In the past, humans have bred dingoes with domesticated dogs. In New South Wales and Western Australia, the law states it is legal to keep a pet dingo. Other Australian regions like Victoria and the Northern Territory require owners to possess a permit for dingo ownership, while the rest of Australia just doesn't allow them as pets at all. Dingoes usually do not pose a threat to humans, so long as you avoid them. 